Hi everyone, welcome to Dave's Bonsai. On today's episode, we kick things off with a Gollum Jade. It's the last day of 2022 and I've got a lot of work to do. Happy New Year to everybody. I hope 2023 brings you lots of love and happiness and uh, wonderful bonsai. We're going to work on a Gollum Jade here. I've got two of them actually. A friend of mine, my buddy Nick from Minnesota Bonsai Society, had a great big jade and that he brought some cuttings to, to one of the Peter T workshops that I've talked about over the year. Uh, the fundamentals course we belong to and um, he just gave away some cuttings and so I took a couple to see if they would root and I have one in 100% pumice and one in some uh, recycled bonsai soil so it's been kind of a side-by-side -side comparison they both look healthy they both look wonderful and we're just gonna thin these out a little bit just to give some early maybe new direction for the rest of the winter season growing season we're gonna do that before I get to that though let me do an update for you We'll kick off the show with the Gullum Jade that I worked on about nine months ago from the bathroom. Now, this little squiggly thing, look at the color compared to this one. And it's skinnier, smaller, yeah. And part of the reason for that is this is kept up in our bathroom. Um, it's just been a bathroom ornamental uh, plant that we just I put into a bonsai pot about nine months ago. But it's by a window, north facing, so it's not the greatest window, but it gets, you know, indirect light all day long. But it's in a bathroom, and it's by that window that has a little bit of a draft. I mean, it's not the warmest place except for when we're taking a shower. So when we take showers, the bathroom has some good humidity, and it gets, you know, indirect moisture from that, and then I water it from time to time. And it's a little scraggly, but it's doing fine. If I brought it back down to my plant room or into my plant room, it probably would shoot up more growth. It would probably get a little bit richer color and just look a little bit more healthy. I'm not going to do anything to this plant, but if you go ahead and look at the uh, video, I'll put that link up there in that corner over there in a the description down below. We'll, if you want to see how I did this, it's only a one minute video. It was one of my shorts and I just showed you what I did real quick. What it looked like before, what it looked like after. 60 seconds, not a whole lot of time to check that out. And this is kind of where it's at now, nine months later. There's some little bit of new growth on here. Um, definitely some new sprouts coming up, but again, it's slow, it's weak, it's not the best growing conditions up there, but it's a fun little tree, and uh, of course, up there, it's just a little ornamental piece, and it keeps us thinking about bonsai. Well, me at least. So there's the update on the gullum, and now we have these two guys. So let me work on the small one first, actually. And we're just going to make a couple of nips and tucks here, and then we've got some other work to do today um, in the plant room. So we've got two trees in this pot. This one's a big stand-up broom style. has a humongous leaf over here. I'm just going to cut that big one off. And again, I think with most jade plants, if you just stick this in soil like right here and leave it there, roots will eventually, after this callus is up, roots will come down there, you can propagate, and you could have a ton of these down the road. Um, so, I've got this uh, tree here right now, now with this one maybe as the primary branch, if that's going to become a branch someday. And so I'm just going to try to see if I can make this kind of go up and every other. I've got this one growing out sideways. This is, the, this is the main leader. It kind of splits into two here. So we have two little directions of growth here. So I think I'm going to take the straight one out. Right there. I'm just going to take that out. So now we have a little bit of movement in this trunk. There's a slight little bend down here. And then we've got this movement over to this side. So we'll keep it right there. We'll take this guy off right here. And we're going to take this guy in the back off right there. This one in the center. And then I think this one that's growing just at a weird angle right here, I think we're going to cut that one off as well. And that's it. Just to give this thing a little bit of a different perspective of light, and we'll see how this thing continues to grow. we got some branches that are a little close together here. You know what? Let's take this one off in favor of this big main one, and then this is the tall part of the tree. Let's cut this inside branch off. There we go. We'll just leave that for now, see what happens. Gollum is relatively new, Jay, to me. The leaves are not leaf-like. They're these long, you know, long little extensions. But when you have a big Gollum tree, it can look pretty cool. It has all the leaves going up towards the top, and you could probably make some really fun pads out of that in the future. 
So this has a split down at the bottom. The question is, do we want to keep the split or make it a curved tree? I think at this stage, I'll still keep it as a split. This branch right now here splits into this great big one right here. So I think I'm going to leave that in here. And I'm going to go ahead and cut this middle section off right there. That big section right there goes. I'm going to cut this one down here off. And so we'll leave this. And this one's a little bit higher. And then we have the center one. So I'm going to cut this big one off. I'm going to cut this big one off because we have a new shoot right there popping up. And so then we have one, two, three, four branches left on that one. So then for this tree, let me just cut this inside off one right now so it's not competing. This kind of shoots right out at us no matter what direction it is. Got the big branch down here in the bottom. Might be a little big. We're going to have to cut that one off in favor of some of this next split. So you can see right here, it does split now from here to here's the main trunk and here's this leaf. That'll become a trunk as well. Let's cut this inside one off to promote that. Let's cut this one off because it competes against this branch. We have this nice split right there. We'll cut this tall leader here off to promote. And we'll leave it at that. So we cut about 50% of that foliage off. It was super nice and thick. You can see we have two nice little buds in there. We have a nice little bud in there. We're just going to put this back on the shelf and see how those two uh, golems grow up and get bigger. Our second is the forest of one, two, three, four, five. This might be a twin. This might be a twin. This might even be a twin. I think it is. It's connected to that one. So. We're just going to cut them up again to give them more light to get more new growth. I'm going to cut these lower branches off for right now, make it look a little bit more tree-like. And so this one leans over this way. I'm going to cut this big one off here and we'll make it a taller tree. We have a lot of nice new little growth in here. So, And my goal here again is just to thin this out and see where See where the growth is going to happen so we can make some decisions down the road too. Um, we've got a nice, nice crop of little uh, new growth in here. One, two, three, four, five, six or so. We've got a lot of, a lot of growth here. Splits into two real nice right there. I think I'll even just take this great big one off right down there. And we have the beginnings of this nice leaning tree with a twin trunk, right? And so that's not too bad. Not too bad at all. And uh, we'll cut this one off because it goes towards the smaller tree. I think I can cut all this off too because I got those splits down there lower. As a matter of fact, I think all I have to do with this tree is cut off all the big branches. Because all of those branches that are left are new growth. It splits into two here. It splits into two here. Two, two, and then two there. And, and then this one right here. We'll, have, we'll leave that one with, uh, we'll leave that one with two as well. So much thinner, much thinner. Now this one down here is a twin trunk as well. We got a real flat couple branches. Look at that. That looks just like your common jade, even though it's a gullum jade. So a very flat petal for the gullum. Pretty, pretty uh, unique. And we have a twin trunk. So again, we'll cut off maybe some of this inside growth. Cut this bottom one off and we'll just leave those four to see what happens. So this splits really nicely into two right here. After this growth here, this would probably come off someday, but we'll just leave it right now. And we'll leave this thick one in the back just for now. We're gonna cut this big one off though. And this big one off here and just let these little ones grow up. We'll see what these two do right here and here. Nope, let's take this big one on here. It competes and it splits nicely into two right there. One, two, there's your split from one to two, and then this one back here, we'll see what it does. So that twin trunk is kind of like a twin. They're about the same size. This is nice because you have a bigger tree and a smaller tree. Now we go back to this one back here. Again, getting rid of some of the real big leaves. Now we have some roots down there to support new growth. And it is, it is splitting and dividing already. So we're in good shape. This is competing with the inside track and there's a nice little split right here. Right here, boom, there's two buds growing right there. I just cut the one off here, but there's two growing right there. So that's really nice. 
and then we can cut this one off its inside growth we'll leave this big branch for a moment but cut this big one off back here because again we have a nice split right here right here there's two branches growing right there so I can even cut this one off for promoting those two and then I've got this one growing inside let's cut that off and we'll let these two grow for a little bit longer as these two grow up and we'll see how that splits off so there's that one and then this twin trunk because that looks like it's all wiggling wiggling at the same time with each other so we'll cut off this inside growing branch we'll cut off this inside growing branch we have some nice splits going on there we'll cut that one off as well we'll cut that one off as well and we'll just leave the rest of them on like that i'm going to get this lowest one off of this one now this one splits in a couple different places i like the growth in the center here better and there's two growths growing right up the top, so we're gonna keep that as the main apex of the tree. These two right here, boom and boom. Nice split into two right there, so we don't need any of this excess for right now. So we'll get rid of that and make that a taller section. And you'll notice right here with this, the tree's growing up this way, has a little bit of a curve this way, and look at how this section right here pushes back that way because we cut this side off. So it has this natural growth already undulating that way. Take this one off right here. I'm going to take this bottom one back here off. And this splits right here into two, and then this one splits right here into two. That could be a, a whirl someday or a, a, something we don't like as much. Look at this leaf. This leaf is like tried to split in two, but it like it fused back together. We'll just leave that on because it's unique. We'll just leave that on for a little bit longer. And I think that's where we're going to stop right there. This isn't any major style decisions other than to thin it out a lot and get all these new buds to really now push out some new growth. And then that new push out of growth, remember, when we push out growth and then we cut it back and push out growth, we get these trunks a lot thicker. So this can become a bigger, bigger jade uh, plant down the road. So there we have it. We have jade one, jade two cuttings from my friend Nick. And we'll put those back under the lights and they are, they are plush, they are love and life. And uh, it's been fun to see this do so well in such well-drained soil. So this is 100% pumice. This is a little bit more organic because there's some broken down material from it being a recycled bonsai soil. Um, and it's just a little bit thicker uh, and the water doesn't drain quite as rapidly out of here, but they both look uh, equally healthy. And it's fun to see how little water you need for these because the water comes right through this pot and just drains right through. So we're gonna put those back on the bench and uh, we'll continue with uh, the next part of the show. So for part two of today, I'm gonna to have to take off the flannel because it's getting awfully warm in here in the plant room. The jade cuttings were super easy, easy access, easy to get to, um, didn't work out much of a sweat. But I've got some moving around to do now. We're going to take all of the premnas from the back corner um, plant room area, which I'll show you in a moment, and uh, we're going to bring them over to my basement shower where I give them my treatment. So here is an update, and we're going to work on uh, the premnas because we talked about this mildew substance. So, so people did uh, respond in the comment section and said, hey, how about a soak? Um, and also just uh, some of the other treatments that people have used, um, some products that would get rid of this, um, this issue. So let me show you this right here. This will focus in on that leaf right there. That is one of the worst I've seen. So that right there, it's hardly green anymore. And these are a couple of leaves that were on the last time we did this. And those don't even look that bad right now, but those were treated. This one right here. But this tree now, since we last shot this, all of these little leaves are new. So they're shooting up new, new growth. But now if we take a close up of those leaves, if I can zoom in on some of those leaves now, I'll zoom in for you in post-production while I chit chat here a little bit here. But, but a lot of these leaves still have that look of not that really nice dark green foliage. They're not dark green from just the, uh, the eye from a distance. And when you look up close, you can see some of the uh, the uh, discoloration of these little tiny leaves. So we're going to go ahead and apply another substance. So let me get that out for you and I'll tell you what we're going to do. So I continue to experiment with the rest of y'all on what to do with our trees. I use a lot of horticultural oil. I use neem oil. I use just soap and water um, and try to get to the trees early, preventative, 
um, and you don't want to get too far into a tree with a big pest problem or a fungicide problem and then you're paying, playing catch up and it's really hard to do. So I've used neem oil and horticultural oil already on these trees. So it's been a week or two since I've done this last and so we're going to go ahead now and we're going to use what, a product that uh, I purchased this year called Grow Safe. So Grow Safe, um, it's a, it's a bio-pesticide, insecticide, miticide, fungicide. So this is a grow safe, which means uh, for me it's an organic product. Um, and uh, you're going to mix, depending upon the severity of the problem, they have from preventative, moderate, severe, or for aphids even, it says on the bottom, that's a much heavier dose of the product. But for me today, I'm going to go with um, the moderate. Um, preventative, nope, it's already got moldy, a kind of a mildewy substance on there. Is it severe? It could be, but I went with moderate, and I have about a half a gallon of the, of the stuff already made. It's in the bathroom, ready to go. So that meant about two teaspoons of, or two ounces, rather, of this, uh, of this um, product, which, was, which is, comes out to be 12 teaspoons. So it's a lot um, when you mix it up right, because two full ounces of this product is, uh, well, it's about one, uh, two eighths of this, you know, one fourth. Um, not a, not a lot of uh, applications in just, just this one bottle. This one bottle will make, I think, enough for four and a half gallons maybe. Makes up to four, 4.25 gallons. So I treat, when I make my, uh, my mixes, I usually go half a gallon at a, at a, at a time. And so this one only uh, lasts me eight times. So I've used it a couple of times. It's about half full. I just mixed them up today and we're going to go ahead and spray some on here. So again, this will help as a preventative for any insects that might be starting to brew down here, especially as I just a couple days ago started adding a little heat to the plant room. Um, and a little bit of mite activity could be getting rid of that. And the fungicide, this uh, mildewy, uh, uh, powdery stuff is what I'm looking for. So again, that is grow safe. I got the first one out. Let's take a look at the second one, and then I'm going to head into the bathroom and start doing the work. Now, this one looks a lot better. This one looks a lot greener, but there's still the powdery mildewy stuff on the leaves. So let me tilt the triple trunk here forward to you, and we'll zoom in on those leaves. And so, again, better looking, a little darker green, a little healthier, still growing, still shooting out growth. Let me show you this right back here. Right there. Right there in front of my, my finger, right there. That's brand new growth in the last couple of days. Look at right here. There's another couple of leaves splitting out right there above this big one. It still pushes out growth. It wants to grow. It's uh, loving life, I think, through the roots and wanting to push out growth. But where is the fungus uh, issue at? But then we have these leaves right here. Again, you can see the discoloration of that big leaf here as we zoom on up. That big leaf, it's just not looking as healthy. So the plant is still alive. It's still kicking out lots of growth. Um, we just have to try to get rid of this uh, mildewy section or issue. And if the miticide doesn't work or the grow safe uh, fungicide product here does not work this time, in a couple of weeks, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to apply um, some, I have some Infuse, which is another product we'll talk about when I do it. But Infuse is a powder substance that you can sprinkle right over your, your, uh, soil at the top of your uh, bonsai pot and then when you water the tree that goes inside and it takes care of it systemically through the roots. It's a preventative and also I, I, I don't remember off the top of my head if it's a preventative only or if you can deal with it when you have some noticeable fungus on your tree. So we'll put some infuse on next and I don't want to overkill and put all these products on at once. So we're going to try this one here grow safe because the neem oil or the horticulture did seem to knock a little bit of it out but not completely so we'll try the grow safe and then we'll try the infuse next time so i need to go put these into the uh, bathroom area and get my staging area all set up to do some spraying of the grow safe i promised a peek at the uh, trees in the back corner of the plant room so these are all the premnas or some of the premnas i should say so there's that back one back there that has little tiny leaves up at the top there that um have uh, not quite as much of the uh, fungus back in that corner. That one looks much more dark green, which is nice. I have a couple of my holiday cactuses right here in my uh, tiger bark ficus. And so here's one of the big uh, guys as well. Let me get that a little bit lower there for you. So it's not too overexposed. So that premna, which has got a big wild root over rock look to it. So that one doesn't look as bad either. Down below, got a couple little in the corner back there. And then we got these right here, the windswept one off to the right. 
That one still looks dark green and, and, and not much, uh, if any of the mold is on there. Plus there's new growth on there. There's some new tips on that uh, since we cut that one back as well. And a couple of these just in these uh, little tiny nursery pots. Um, those are all growing new leaves, but they all have some of that fungus on there. So all those uh, plants doing well there. There's an update on the cuttings, my most recent cuttings from the porch of the Caria Afras about a month or two ago. They're all reaching up towards the light and loving things pretty good. The ones under the purple light, the pink purple hue, um, bottom row looking pretty good. Sorry about the hue there, I should turn those lights off for you there. And then that uh, variegated one that's uh, cascading back there, a lot of people reacted strongly to that one. It's really thickening up nice. Not a lot of uh, runners going per se, but it's thickening up with new growth, so that's fun to see. And then the ones I just took out, this one, that one was from the Three Forest, so they're uh, they're there uh, in their new home. And the back one, back in that corner back there is the other one. So all those in their new home. And then I went ahead and I defoliated this one here. And we have little tiny little nub of a growth right there. And we have a little tiny nub that you can't see back there, but uh, that one's starting to push out some of the new growth. And I went ahead and nipped and tucked all of the other premnas on here to make it again easier to water and just promote more compact and uh, closer clusters of growth. We put the uh, Gollum Jades back on the shelf back there. They're sitting back there under the purple light. So that's this corner of the plant room. Everything seems to be doing okay, except for right now we got to tackle these premnas. So let's get into the bathroom and take care of some business. I'm all set to begin the process of spraying the trees with this grow safe. So I have the grow safe all mixed up into my container here. So I'm going to go ahead and give that some uh, pressure. And we're all set to go. Now, notice I'm wearing a mask. So typically when I spray my trees outside, I'm not wearing a mask as much as I probably should. But I have a mask in here because I'm in this small contained room, my bathroom in the basement. What I like about doing this in the bathroom is when I'm done with this process right now on film, I'm going to turn on the vent, which is right above the bathroom, which is right above where the trees are all going to sit. And all of the spraying I'm doing, I can close this door, the bathroom door, and it'll vent all of this outside of the house. So I'm keeping the house uh, safe from everybody else as well. We're going to go ahead and give these some uh, couple of sprays, put them in the floor of the uh, shower, turn the fan on, let this sit for a half an hour. We'll come back and we'll spray them off with the shower head or a clean bottle of spray, and we'll uh, hope that this works. So make sure you're spraying the tree all the way around. You turn that tree around from all directions and try to squirt from the bottom up as well. And again, I'm squirting into the bathroom uh, shower here. And that is really well done. So it's dripping right off there. You can almost see a little milky substance right there. It's a little white in color. And we're gonna go ahead and put this in the shower and let it sit for about 30 minutes. We grab our next tree and we do that one. sprayed. We're going to go ahead and turn on the fan, close the door, come back in a half an hour and rinse these uh, trees out and get all that medicine off of there and hope it did its job. Now while we're waiting for the uh, trees in the bathroom to uh, have their medicine stick to the leaves and kill anything that's there, get rid of that fungus, I want to show you a couple of updates. So here is the fish pot tank, and the trees were uh, pruned about, uh, I don't know, a week or two ago, maybe maybe two to three weeks ago. Uh, and look at the growth. Look at the thickness of that growth. Pretty wonderful there. And there we go. And here's the front tree. Look at this growth right here. So now this is one of those ones that just shoot right off. This gives this tree some uh, some depth. So I'm warning about this tree. I've got this nice curly uh, tree. It's nice and long and, and kind of um, 
that slender look. It's got a bit of a Y branch back here. And I wonder if I cut all of that section off and put that in a pot, air layer that, and just keep the tree short like this down here with all this curve right here. So that would be the tree. That light above is super bright, but uh, I like it still because it's the big um, focal point of this design. And these are all the little tiny whips that we're in. And they've sensed that one's grown a twin trunk back there, but all those are growing some nice uh, extensions. And we've got all the leaves. Uh, growing on all those and there's the five trunker right there so that was a trunk right down there that was a an air layer chop we chopped that air layer and then now five five new uh, trees grew there oh and incidentally here's my hibiscus leaf um, it is all nice and uh, dried out and crispy I'm gonna throw this into some water uh, sometime this evening for uh, a New Year's Eve uh, hibiscus tea we'll put that in about a cup or so or or two of boiling water, add a little bit of honey, maybe a touch of cinnamon. So here's some more uh, plants. Uh, here is the hibiscus uh, tree, and the bird is doing fine up there. You might notice I have a couple of plants. I'm taking care of some plants for my daughter, including the money tree there. But here's the hibiscus. Everything's shooting up and really, really liking life after our uh, big uh, chop. You know, we've got uh, this growth right here. There's a little tiny one right there. Look at that guy growing, shooting straight up. Uh, it's, it's healthy, and uh, I don't think the chop slowed it down one bit. And we come to the table with all the trees in, the dracaenas. We've got the uh, triangularis variegated here. Uh, super healthy, real up close to this light. And that's one of the things I wonder about all my trees like back here. These are a good foot from the light, and if I could raise all those, I think they'd love life, even though there's the north-facing window. But the Amingaralia is there. Mingarelia is looking pretty good. Um, they haven't shut up a lot of new growth yet, but they're, they're, they're surviving the prune I did. And there is the um, Melina. So let's look at the Melina there. I've had some dieback of the original leaves, but all of those green leaves, that's all new growth since I did the work on there. All that green. So I'm liking that. We've got the uh, Schefflera back there. That seems to be doing well. We can go back here to the ficus we put recently into a twin. We put all those ficus trunks together, put them together, and at the very top there, there's some new growth right there. Real thin little leaf there that's brand new growth since we did that action, so we know things are doing well with that ficus as well. So the trees on the uh, benches are looking really pretty good. We've got some tiger bark ficus ficuses, tiger bark ficus, say that fast, real, uh, real fast three times. A lot of new growth up top here by all this light. That's uh, really liking that. Not a lot of growth down below, um, but there is some straggly growth here. But that's because, again, I think it's too far away from the light for that lower growth. If I shaved all of this off, we'd get some new growth down there. Um, these are going to be used for a workshop coming up. I've got some clients that are looking for a workshop. A uh, family of seven. It's going to all work on a tree. It's going to be fun. It's coming up in a couple of weeks. I'll update you on that. So the trees in the plant room. Love and life. And the last update is the uh, the grape wood with the two trees on it. We've got the variegated Benjamina, and we've got uh, another Melina. Doing really well. These two are doing really well in this pot. Now, this pot had four in it before. Two have died out, but it's just made really nice room for these two. And if you look really close, what is popping up out of the ground right there? Lo and behold, but another mushroom. Round two for this planting. I've had two bouts of mushrooms in this. But look at that little thing. Ha! <laughs> I love it. And the uh, forest of the Benjamina back there as well. Again, we got the purple light on here. so a little bit harder to see. But you can see the general shape of those guys. And they're uh, doing okay. And this one, again, this one dries out the fastest. I have to water this one every other day for sure. Because it just dries to a bone and crisp and hard as a rock really, really fast. The updates from the plant room. Everything seems to be happy. It's been about a half an hour now, so we're going to go ahead and uh, kind of rinse all the uh, trees off and get them back on the benches. So let's get that started.
And as with many functions in bonsai, I've got a big mess to clean up. I got the smaller trees all tucked in down at the bottom. We got a couple of the bigger trees sitting right up there on the top. And we'll wrap things up here with uh, the favorite of, of these trees of mine is this really bizarre twin trunk. Really nice looking trunk on this one. This is where the chew came around here. The chew is really bad right there. Got this solo trunk that has chew on the outside, but there's trunk on the inside. With this long root that looks like it's trying to actually heal out here on the bottom. It's trying to heal over. That root might come off one day here. But I just love all the ramification on this one. So I'm just going to go ahead and continue to promote the ramification. We just treated the tree. And uh, got a lot of back budding back here. So we're just going to continue to uh, see what this one can do. I got some uh, boys playing basketball right across in the next room. If you hear lots of banging and yelling and screaming, they sound like they're killing each other, but they're probably not. Um, although there's been tears at least once today already. So get a couple of these little shorter ones here and this will promote some more uh, growth back. Um, again, this tree is uh, pushing out new growth, even though it's got all of this uh, fungal, this um, mildewy substance on here. And one of the things we're going to make sure of is I made sure when I put all those trees back that none of these pieces, parts of the leaves are, are keeping in here to seep down into the soil. So make sure when you're cutting off your, your fungus trees, your mold on your trees, your whatever is on your trees, that you're going to go ahead and take care of that as well. So, so we've got some, uh, it's just a, just a nice little tree here. Just this nice form of a tree right there. Kind of fun. Two trees that form one tree. I just like this weird, um, the critter chop is something we can't do anything about. So we're just trying to make the best tree possible. And uh, let's wrap it up there for that tree. And then this one is another one that was cut into an air layer. You can go check uh, the uh, playlist for the Premnas. And this one almost looks like I was thinking about uh, one of Nigel's trees, and he, he, one of them is an elephant tree or, or something. This almost has the resemblance. What do you think, everybody? What could that look like? What do you think that might look like? It almost looks like it could be some kind of Komodo dragon. Leg, leg, tail. This could become the head. Yeah, Komodo dragon, anybody? So this is the original chop right here. So look at the chop. This is one of the big branches, and that's almost completely um, to a point where at, at just a glance, you can't tell that there was a, a chopped tree there, so that's kind of interesting. This still has this nasty bulge right here. We could probably cut this back a little bit and see if some of this will grow over in time. It's a nasty uh, marked up tree again from Critter Trap that I'm just trying to save. Will we keep this tail branch down here? No, that's not going to stay. But that's just put on new growth in the, in the plant room, mostly in the last uh, couple of weeks. Uh, or a couple of months, actually, now, because we're in December. So we've got another uh, aerial root that kind of went down here. So this is over a rock, obviously, as you can see. Um, who knows what will happen with this tree in the future. But we sprayed it down, um, doing a couple of uh, trims here before we get it back into the, uh, its resting place. Now this one's getting all big and bushy out here. I think I'm just going to cut it shorter right there and let all of this new growth take off and see what it does. And same with this, this is thick and chunky. We cut that off and we'll, we'll promote one of these two branches in the future. So it's thin, it's a stick in a pot. We'll hope we'll get more back budding and we'll continue to see what happens with this very bizarre Komodo dragon over rock. <laughs> we'll see. And that is going to do it for another episode of Dave's Bonsai. Thank you so much for watching. We got all of the trees treated, and we also were able to cut up some of those gullum jades into a little bit uh, more um, an airy look to have that light come in there and see what other branches will grow out and some updates for you. It is the last day of 2022. Happy New Year to everybody. Um, I am so excited about 2023. I hope you are too. Hope you had a really, really good, safe, and uh, happy holiday season, including the new year. Bring it in with positive vibes. And uh, you know what? Take care of you. Take care of your bonsai. And we'll catch you in the new year. <laughs>